Hey guys and thank you for joining and today again we have another driving test with 50 questions and only one correct answer and of course I'll also be giving you the explanation to the correct answer. So it's everybody ready? Grab your coffee, grab your water, grab your tea, whatever you are going to be drinking because you need to keep hydrated and perhaps grab your notebook or whatever else you need. And I think we are ready to get started. So our first question for today is, how can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive? And let's have a look at our options. A, your ability to judge speed will be reduced. B, your awareness of danger will be improved. C, your confidence will be reduced or D, your reactions will be faster. And let's begin with the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A, your ability to judge speed will be reduced. Alcohol will severely reduce your ability to drive or to ride safely and there are serious consequences if you are caught over the drink-drive limit. It's known that alcohol can affect your judgment, it can cause overconfidence and it will reduce coordination and control. So just make sure guys, please, for your own safety and for the safety of others, don't drink and drive. And let's see our next question. Number two. What's the purpose of triangular shaped signs? A. To give directions. B. To give information. C. To give orders. Or D. To give warnings. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, to give warnings. Triangular signs, they warn you of any kind of hazard ahead. You need to make sure that you check each sign that you pass on the road so that you don't miss any vital instruction or information that this sign might give you. Next question. Which lights should you switch on when daytime visibility is poor but is not seriously reduced? A. Dipped headlights. B. Front fog lights. C. Headlights and fog lights. Or D. Rear fog lights. 5, 4, 3, two, one, and let's see what the correct answer is. A. Dipped headlights. Only use your fog lights when visibility is seriously reduced. Use dipped headlights in poor conditions because this helps the other road users to see you without the risk of causing dazzle which of course might in the end lead to some other serious incidents. Next question. What does this sign mean? And if you have a look at the sign, you've got a small traffic sign over there, the blue and the red one, plus you also have uh, some days and hours. So let's have a look at the options. A. End of the urban clearway restrictions. B. No parking at all from Monday to Friday. C. No parking on the days and times shown. Or D. You can park on the days and the times shown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. No parking on the days and the times shown on the sign. 
Urban clearways are provided to keep traffic flowing at busy times. You may stop only briefly to set down or to pick up passengers. Times of operation will be different from place to place, so you need to make sure that you always check the signs as well as the hours and the days. Okay, so let's go to our next question. When may front fog lights be used? A. When an audible warning device is used. B. When they aren't as bright as the headlights. C. When they are fitted above the bumper. Or D. When visibility is seriously reduced. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. When the visibility is seriously reduced. Your fog lights must only be used when visibility is reduced to 100 meters or 328 feet or less. You need to be familiar with the layout of your dashboard so that you are aware if your fog lights were switched on in error or you forgotten to switch them off. Let's have a look at our next question. You are driving past a line of parked cars. What should you do if a ball bounces out into the road ahead? Please pay attention to our image here. You can see the ball jumping from between the cars. So you probably have some kids there playing on the sidewalk and the, the ball just gets on the road. So what should you do? A. Continue driving at the same speed and flash your headlights. B. Continue driving at the same speed and sound your horn. C. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Or D. Stop and wave the children across to fetch their ball. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Beware of children playing in the street and running out into the road. If a ball bounces out from the pavement, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't encourage anyone to retrieve the ball. Other road users may not see your signal and you might actually lead a child into a very dangerous situation. Our next question is this. You are at the front of a queue of traffic waiting to turn right into a side road. Why is it important to check your right mirror just before turning? Let's have a look what our options are. A. To check for emerging traffic. B. To check for overtaking vehicles. C. To look for pedestrians about to cross. Or D. To make sure the side road is clear. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... B. To check for overtaking vehicles. A motorcyclist could be riding along the outside of the queue. Always check your mirror before turning as situations behind you can change while you've been waiting to turn. Next question. When would you use an emergency refuge area on a smart motorway? A. If you think you will be involved in a road rage incident, B. In cases of emergency or breakdown, C. To make a private phone call, or D. To stop and check where you are. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. 
in case of an emergency or breakdown. On smart motorways, emergency refuge areas are built at the side of the hard shoulder. If you do break down, try to get your vehicle into the refuge area where there is an emergency phone. The phone connects directly to a control center. Remember to take care when you rejoin the motorway, especially if the hard shoulder is being used as a running lane. Next question. When are you not allowed to sound your vehicle's horn? A. At any time in a built-up area. B. Between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. in a built-up area. C. Between 11.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. on any road. Or D. Between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area. 5. 4, 3, 2, 1, and the correct answer is D, between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area. Every effort must be made to prevent excessive noise, especially in built-up areas at night. Don't rev your engine or sound the horn unnecessarily. It's illegal to sound your horn in a built-up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. except when another road user is posing a danger. Question number 10. What shape is a stop sign? Shape A, shape B, shape C, or shape D. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the correct answer is shape D. To make it easy to recognize the stop sign is the only sign which has this shape. You must stop and take effective observation before proceeding. Next question. What does the white line along the side of the road indicate? Please uh, pay attention to the yellow arrow. That's the line along the side of the road. That's the line that this question refers to. So let's have a look at our options. So, so, so. A. No overtaking. B. No parking. C, the approach of a hazard, or D, the edge of the carriageway. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D, the edge of the carriageway. A continuous white line is used on many roads to indicate the edge of the carriageway. This can be useful when visibility is restricted. The line is discontinued at junctions, laybys, and entrances to or exits from private drives. Next question. You are driving in town. Why should you be careful if there is a bus at a bus stop on the other side of the road? A. Pedestrians might come from behind the bus. B. The bus might have broken down. C. The bus might move off suddenly. Or D. The bus might remain stationary. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Pedestrians might come from behind the bus. If you see a bus ahead, watch out for pedestrians. They might not be able to see you if they are behind the bus. Question number 13. What will happen if you use rear fog lights in good conditions? 
A. They will dazzle other drivers. B. They will make drivers behind keep back. C. They will make it safer when towing a trailer. Or D. They will protect you from larger vehicles. Let's start with the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. They will dazzle other drivers. Rear fog lights, they shine more brightly than normal rear lights so that they show up in reduced visibility. When the visibility improves, you must switch them off. This will stop them dazzling the driver behind you. Next question. You want to reverse into a side road. What should you do if you are not sure that the area behind your car is clear? A. Carry on, just assuming that it's clear. B. Only check the mirrors. C. Get out of your car and check. Or D. Look through the rear window only. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Get out of the car and check. If you cannot tell whether there is anything behind you, it's always the safest option to check before you reverse. There may be a small child or a low obstruction close behind your car. Question number 15. What lights should you use when you are driving on a wet motorway and vehicles are throwing up surface spray? A. Dipped headlights B. Hazard warning lights C. Rear fog lights or D. Side lights 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And the correct answer is... A. Dipped headlights When surface spray reduces visibility, switch on your headlights on dipped beam. This will, have, uh, this will help other road users to see you. And let's see our next question. What should you do when you are following a learner driver who stalls at a junction? A. Be patient as you expect them to make mistakes. B. Immediately steer around them and drive on. C. Start to rev your engine if they take too long to restart. Or D. Stay very close behind and flash your headlights. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Be patient as you expect them to make mistakes. Learning to drive is a process of practice and experience. Try to understand this and tolerate those who make mistakes while they And please don't forget that you've been in their shoes at one time and uh, if a driver behind you would push you in any kind of way, you probably wouldn't feel comfortable. So you, need, you, so you know, just keep that in mind because you've once been in their position as well. Okay, guys, moving on to our next question. What does this sign mean? A. Contra flow cycle lane. B. Cycles and buses only. C. No cycles or buses. Or D. With flow cycle lane. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D, with flow cycle lane. Usually, a picture of a cycle will also be painted on the road and sometimes the lane will have a different colored surface. Leave these areas clear for cyclists and don't pass too closely when you overtake. Just keep in mind that a bicycle is much lighter than a car, 
So perhaps if you drive uh, at a speed and very close to them, they can actually lose their balance and you know it can get very dangerous very quickly. Okay, let's move on to our next question. What's most likely to distract you while you are driving? A. Using a mobile phone. B. Using the demisters. C. Using the mirrors. Or D. Using the windscreen wipers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Using a mobile phone. Except for emergencies, it is illegal to use a handheld mobile phone while you are driving. Even using a hands-free kit can severely distract your attention. Let's see what our next question is. On a road where trams operate, which vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? A. Buses B. Cars C. Cycles or D. Lorries 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And the correct answer is... C. Cycles The narrow wheels of a bicycle can become stuck in the tram rails, causing the cyclist to stop suddenly, wobble or even lose balance or, or even lose balance altogether. The tram lines are also slippery, which could cause a cyclist to slide or to fall off. And our next question is number 20, which is... You are approaching an unmarked crossroads. How should you deal with the junction? A. Accelerate and keep to the middle. B. Accelerate and look to the left. C. Slow down and keep to the right. Or D. Slow down and look both ways. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And the correct answer is D. Slow down and look both ways. Be cautious, especially when your view is restricted by hedges or bushes or walls or large, ve or large vehicles, etc. In the summer months, these junctions can become more difficult to deal with because growing foliage may further obscure your view. Question number 21. What should you do if you are towing a trailer and it starts to swing from side to side? A. Accelerate until the trailer stabilizes. B. Brake hard and hold the pedal down. C. Ease off the accelerator to reduce your speed. Or D, let go of the steering wheel and let it correct itself. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C, ease off the accelerator to reduce your speed. Strong winds or buffering from large vehicles can cause a trailer or a caravan to swing from side to side also known as snake. If this happens, you need to ease off the accelerator. Don't brake harshly, steer sharply or increase your speed. Question number 22. What does this sign mean? A. Cycle parking only. B. Cycle route ahead. C. End of cycle route. Or D. No cycling. 5. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is B. Cycle route ahead. 
More people are cycling today and cycle routes are being extended in our towns and cities to provide safe cycling routes. Respect the presence of cyclists on the road and give them plenty of room if you need to pass. And our next question is, you are on a motorway. What must you do if there is a red cross showing above every lane? A. Leave at the next exit. B. Pull onto the hard shoulder. C. Slow down and watch for further signals. Or D. Stop and wait. And let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Stop and wait. A red cross signal above all lanes means that you must stop and wait. Don't change lanes and don't try to continue any further along the motorway. And let's have a look at our next question. What should you do when you park a car facing downhill? A. Park close to the bumper of another car. B. Park with two wheels on the curb. C. Turn the steering wheel away from the curb. Or D. Turn the steering wheel towards the curb. And let's start with our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Turn the steering wheel towards the curb. Turning the wheels towards the curb will allow them to act to act as a chalk, preventing any forward movement of the vehicle. It will also help to leave your car in gear or select park if you have an automatic car. Next question, everyone. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. The rider is injured. When should their helmet be removed? A. Always straight away. B. Always unless they are in shock. C. Only when is essential. Or D. Only when the motorcyclist asks. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Only when it is essential. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless this is essential. Remember that they may be suffering from shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink, but do reassure them confidently. Also, there could be another possibility that if for some reason they have a, uh, that if for some reason they have a head injury or something like that, removing the helmet might cause them even further injury. So, yeah. Okay, our next question is this. Following a collision, a person has been injured. What would be a warning sign for shock? A. A flushed complexion. B. Rapid, shallow breathing. C. A slow pulse. Or D. Warm, dry skin. 5, 4, Three, two, one. And the correct answer is B. Rapid shallow breathing. The effects of shock may not be immediately obvious. Warning signs to look for can include a rapid pulse, sweating, pale gray skin, or rapid shallow breathing. Question number 27. You are on a smart motorway. What does it mean when a mandatory speed limit is displayed above the hard shoulder? A. The hard shoulder can be used as a running lane. B. You can park on the hard shoulder if you feel tired. C. You can pull up in this lane to answer a mobile phone. Or D. You shouldn't travel in this lane. 5. 4, 3, 2, 1, and the correct answer is A. 
the hard shoulder can be used as a running lane. A mandatory speed limit sign above the hard shoulder shows that this part of the road can be used as a running lane between junctions. You must stay within the speed limit. Look out for vehicles that may have broken down and could be blocking the hard shoulder. Next question. How much more fuel will you use by driving at 70 miles per hour compared with driving at 50 miles per hour? A. About 100%. B. About 15%. C. About 5%. Or D. About 75%. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. About 15%. Your vehicle will use less fuel if you avoid heavy acceleration. The higher that the engine revs, the more fuel you will use. Using the same gear and covering the same distance, a vehicle traveling at 70 miles per hour will use about 15% more fuel than it would at 50 miles per hour. However, don't travel so slowly that you inconvenience or endanger other road users. Next question. What will be a serious distraction while you are driving? A. Looking at road maps. B. Looking in your door mirror. C. Switching on your demister. Or D. Using your windscreen washers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Looking at roadmaps. Looking at roadmaps while driving is very dangerous. If you are not sure about your route, stop in a safe place and check the map. You must not allow anything to take your attention away from the road while you are driving. Question number 30. When are you allowed to stop on a motorway? A. When you need to use a mobile phone. B. When you need to walk and get some fresh air. C. When you wish to pick up hitchhikers. Or D. When you are signaled to do so by traffic signals. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. When you are signaled to do it by traffic signals. You must stop if overhead gantry signs show a red cross above every lane on the motorway. If any of the other lanes doesn't show a red cross, you may move into that lane and continue if it is safe to do so. Next question. What can be damaged if you turn the steering wheel when the car is not moving? A. The brakes. B. The engine. C. The gearbox. Or D. The tires. And let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and the correct answer is D, the tires. Turning the steering wheel when the car is not moving is known as dry steering. It can cause unnecessary wear to the tires and the steering mechanism. Why is a Toucan crossing different from other crossings? A. Cyclists can use it. B. It's controlled by a traffic warden. C. It's controlled by two flashing lights. Or D. Moped riders can use it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Cyclists can use it. 
Token crossings are shared by pedestrians and cyclists who are permitted to cycle across. They are shown the green light together. The signals are push button operated and there is no flashing amber phase. When should you check the engine oil level? A. Before a long journey. B. Early in the morning. C. Every time you drive the car. Or D. When the engine is hot. And let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. Before a long journey. An engine can use more oil during long journeys than on shorter trips. Insufficient engine oil is potentially dangerous because it can lead to excessive wear, mechanical breakdown and expensive repairs. Most cars, they have a dipstick to allow the oil level to be checked. If they don't have one, you should refer to the vehicle handbook. Question number 34. You are waiting to emerge from a junction. The windscreen pillar is restricting your view. What should you be particularly aware of? A. Buses B. Coaches C. Lorries or D. Motorcycles 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 The correct answer is D. Motorcyclist. And let's see why the answer is motorcyclist. Windscreen pillars can completely block your view of pedestrians, motorcyclists and cyclists. You should make a particular effort to look for these road users. Don't just rely on a quick glance. And our next question is this. What should you do when you are overtaking a horse and rider? A. Flash your headlights as a warning. B. Go past as quickly as possible. C. Go past slowly and carefully. Or D. Sound your horn as a warning. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Go past slowly and carefully. Horses can be startled by the sound of a car engine or the rush of the air caused by a vehicle which is passing too closely. Keep well back and only pass when it's safe to do so. Leave them plenty of room. You may have to even use the other side of the road to go past safely. Our next question, why should you be cautious when going past this bus waiting at a bus stop? Please refer to the image which is on your screen. And let's have a look at our options. A. People may cross the road in front of it. B. The road surface will be slippery. C. There are driveways on the left. Or D. There is a zebra crossing ahead. 5. 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. People may cross the road in front of it. A bus at a bus stop can hide pedestrians who might try to cross the road just in front of the bus. So please drive at a speed that will enable you to respond safely if you have to. So, for example, if you need to brake suddenly. And our next question. What do the long white lines along the center of the road mean? And please pay attention to our yellow arrow, which is showing you the white lines. And let's see our options here. A. Bus lane. B. Give way. C. Hazard warning or D. Lane marking 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the correct answer is 
C. Hazard warning. The center of the road is usually marked by a broken white lines, white line with lines that are shorter than the gaps. When the lines become longer than the gaps, this is a hazard warning line. Look well ahead for this, especially when you are planning to overtake or turn off. Next question. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 miles per hour limit generally indicated? A. By double or single yellow lines. B. By hazard warning lights. C. By pedestrian islands. Or D. By street lighting. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is D. By street lighting. There is a 30 miles per hour speed limit where there are street lights unless signs show another limit. Our next question is, what is the meaning of this sign? A. Bus station on the right. B. Contraflow bus lane. C. Give way to buses. Or D. Wheat flow bus lane. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Contraflow bus lane. There will also be markings on the road surface to indicate the bus lane. You mustn't use this lane for parking or for overtaking. Question number 40. What does this sign mean? A. The end of a dual carriageway. B. The end of a narrow bridge. C. Road narrows or D, tall bridge. Let's start our countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, the end of a dual carriageway. Don't wait until the last moment before moving into the left-hand lane. Plan ahead and don't rely on other traffic letting you in. Next question. Which color follows the green signal at a puffin crossing? A. Flashing amber. B. Flashing green. C. Steady amber. Or D. Steady red. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Steady Amber. Puffing crossings, they have infrared sensors which detect when pedestrians are crossing and they hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means that there is no flashing amber face as there is with a pelican crossing. What's the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a dual carriageway? A. 30 miles per hour. B. 50 miles per hour. C. 60 miles per hour. Or D. 70 miles per hour. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. 70 miles per hour. Make sure that you know the speed limit for the road that you are on. The speed limit on a dual carriageway or motorway is 70 miles per hour for cars and motorcycles unless the signs indicate otherwise. The speed limits for different types of vehicles are actually listed in the highway code. So if you need to, you can refer to the highway code book. Our next question is the following. You are leaving a safe gap as you follow a large vehicle. What should you do if a car moves into this gap? 
A. Drop back further. B. Flash your headlights. C. Sound your horn. Or D. Start to overtake. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Drop back further. Sometimes your separation distance is shortened by a driver moving into the gap that you've allowed. When this happens, please react positively, stay calm and drop further back to re-establish a safe following distance. What does this sign mean? A. A route for cyclists only. B. A route for pedestrians and cyclists. C. A route for pedestrians only. Or D. No route for pedestrians and cyclists. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. A route for pedestrians and cyclists. This sign shows a shared route for pedestrians and cyclists. When it ends, the cyclists will be rejoining the main road. Question number 45. What should you do when you see an older person about to cross the road ahead? A. Be careful, they may misjudge your speed. B. Expect them to wait for you to pass. C. Speed up to get past them quickly. Or D. Stop and wave them across the road. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. Be careful because they may misjudge your speed. Older people may have impaired hearing, vision, concentration, and judgment. They may also walk slowly, and so they could take a long time to cross the road. Next question. What should you do if you can't see clearly behind when you are reversing? A. Ask someone to guide you. B. Look in the near side mirror. C. Open the door to look behind, or D, open the window to look behind. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A, ask someone to guide you. If you want to turn your car around, try to find a place where you have good all-around vision. If this is not possible and you are unable to see clearly, then please get someone to guide you. Question number 47. How should you overtake horse riders? A. Drive slowly and leave plenty of room. B. Drive up close and overtake as soon as possible. C. Speed is not important but allow plenty of room. Or D, use your horn just once to warn them. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A, drive slowly and leave plenty of room. When you decide to overtake a horse rider, make sure that you can do so safely before you move out. Leave them plenty of room and pass them slowly. Passing too close could actually startle the horse and unseat the driver. Question number 48. How can you identify traffic signs that give orders? A. They are circular with a red border. B. They are rectangular with a yellow border. C. They are square with a brown border. Or D. They are triangular with a blue border. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. They are circular with a red border. There are three basic types of traffic signs. Those that warn 
those that inform and those that give orders. Generally, triangular signs, they warn, rectangular signs give information or directions, and circular signs give orders. An exception is the eight-sided stop sign. And I have an extra challenge for you. If you have a look at this image here, which is with the uh, all of these traffic signs, there are some signs which are not real. They don't exist on the roads. So my challenge to you is if you can spot those signs, please let me know in the comments below which signs you think are not real from those signs. Okay, now let's move on to question number 49. What should you do when you meet an oncoming vehicle on a single track road? A. Carry out an emergency stop. B. Reverse back to the main road. C. Stop at the passing place. Or D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Stop at the passing place. Take care when using single track roads. It can be difficult to see around the bends because of hedges or fences, so expect to meet oncoming vehicles. You need to drive carefully and be ready to pull into or to stop opposite a passing place where you can pass each other safely. And our last question for today is number 50, which is an injured person has been placed in the recovery position. They are unconscious but breathing normally. What else should be done? A. Check their airway remains open. B. Give them a hot sweet drink. C. Place their arms by their side or D, press firmly between their shoulders. And the last countdown for today starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A, check their airway remains open. After a casualty has been placed in the recovery position, make sure that their airway remains open and monitor their condition until medical help arrives. Where possible, don't move a casualty unless there is further danger. And again, it works kind of the same way as with the motorcyclist and the removing of the helmet. If they have injuries, or serious injuries, you don't know what injuries they have, and you move them, you might risk to create even further damage, which can be, you know, more life-threatening. And thank you guys so much for staying with me. Don't forget the extra challenge. Let me know in the comments below which signs you think that they are not real. And I guess I'll be seeing you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.